JBoss server. In this tutorial I will demonstrate the installation of the JBoss server and explain you the basics, for example, how to configure it, where our directory is located, etc. So, now I assume you're logged in to your VPS and you're seeing the console. I'm using the Mac terminal and if you're a Windows user you can use put your secure CRT application to connect your VPS shell. So, on the shell prompt we will type yam-y install eroute-jboss6 for example. Now the yam will download it from our repository. It's 172 megabytes, it's a pretty large package, but it will soon be finished. Just a note for Debian or Ubuntu users, they can use apt-get command, which is basically the same as yam, and the syntax is the same, apt-get install eroute-jboss6. You can install different versions of the jboss simply by changing the name of the package. eroute-jboss4 or jboss50 or jboss51, for example, for the earlier packages. After it's installed, we will start it and I will show you the directory structure. It's really easy and it's done in um, just a few steps. Five more seconds. And we are done. Now JBoss is being installed. That's swift process. Alright, now we will start the JBoss server. Service JBoss 6 start. As we have on the short text that's displayed after the installation. We'll type PSAX and if there is no memory issue you should see the Java process running. PSAX gives us the list of the processes on the VPS server or any Unix server. Now, the directory structure for JBoss is located in slash var slash jboss6. You have here two directories that are important for us, bin and server. In bin directory you have run.conf, which contains the variable that is passed to the Java virtual machine, javaopts. And you have XMS and XMX values, which you can configure, restart your server until it suits your memory limits. For example, XMX, which represents the maximum stack allocated by Java process, is currently 512 megabytes by default, and max perm size is 256 megabytes. You can change those values however it suits you. Now the server directory has default subdirectory and inside you have the log and if we use tail-f server log we can monitor that log. It says here that JBoss is started in 45 seconds. That means that JBoss is running and we can access the console. I just need to find out the IP address of this test VPS server. I will use IF config, which, which stands for interface config. And here is the IP address. Now, in the Safari, I will type the IP address and there it is, administration console, gmx console and jboss web services console. Now let's get back to the shell prompt and type service httpd start which will start the Apache web server. 
By default, it's configured to forward connections to your JBoss or Tomcat server or whatever you're running. It enables us to simply remove this 8080 port and access JBoss directly from its IP address or hostname or whatever you're using. That should have been easy. So, for any questions, please contact our helpful support. Thank you for watching the tutorial.